over, West Ham United will not be in a European final. It is Eintracht Frankfurt's night. Completing the job here by a goal to nil, 3-1 on aggregate. Last season I was in a semi-final with West Ham and I want to try and take it, take it that one stage further. It's so obviously I was devastated saying we're not reaching the final and we want to go that one more step and, and, and win the trophy. Players want to go where they see their success, they want to be part of, of something which they see is growing. I think in the last couple of years we've done that. West Ham United. West Ham United goes to group B. Boyd's hit! Boy, he thumped it. We came close last year, we really did, we came close and this year we've done, we've gone a step further. The next part is to see if we can go on and win it now. Pacatari's played it through, and Bowen's in! It's up for grabs now! Yeah, bro. Okay. Yeah, last year was obviously really, really disappointing but something we can hold our heads high about. It was a great run. So obviously I was devastated uh, in terms of not reaching the final and, and of course we had another shot at it uh, you know, this year and, and getting back in Europe. I'm sure the boys were, they were proud of themselves and yeah, I think everyone else was proud of, um, proud of what the team put and the effort they put in. We wanted really to, to, to keep that uh, energy, to keep that dynamic, to show everyone that uh, West Ham deserve to play in, in Europe. And it was kind of using that fire in our belly that was still there to not feel that, that same disappointment of being losing semi-finalists. I think everyone's inside of themselves were, were thinking about we cannot do this again, we cannot afford this disappointment again. The year before that we started off straight into the group stage for qualifying sixth and then yeah it was a little bit different this year we had to go through a qualifying stage you know travelling to, to Denmark against them teams they play you know some nice football so yeah that was that was the start of it. I don't think we'd be you know, saying that we knew an awful lot about them but I think that's the beauty of this competition you play against teams that you never think you'd play against and it's it's different cultures, different philosophies of football and Fireball was, was the same and you know, we had a couple of uh, teams from, from there that were, caused us a lot of problems. You don't really get to see you know, Danish football and yeah, certainly to play them in the, in the qualifying round. Uh, we watched them you know, with the build up to what before the game. And as I say, they were a, they were a good uh, passing team. Uh, you know, they like to play the right way, and, and uh, yeah, certainly, you know, it wasn't an easy game as, as as it might have seemed. And as I say, we can only beat the teams that are in front of us. And I remember, you know, we got a good start to, to the qualifying round. I remember scoring my first goal in a European competition last last year. So to score in that competition as well in the playoff game at home, it was yeah, I enjoyed that one. I would definitely say we didn't have any complacency going into the competition. You know, I think every time I was around around that environment, um, you know, the boys took took the game as as if it was a, a Premier League fixture. I think that we have to focus on, on us first uh, to work on our strengths and just to work on what we have to do. You know, um, every games are, are different, but if you're focused on, on yourself, on your team, then you feel confident and know 
uh, where you're going and when, where you want to, to go. I think the main thing then again was getting into the, getting into the group stage in the, in the playoff rounds and we, we managed to do that. This is BBC News from London. Buckingham Palace has announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. It was a bit of a strange day. Obviously, we was done our normal prep of, of the day of the game and was at the hotel, and we wasn't sure if the game was going to be on or what, what the circumstances were. And the game went ahead, and I remember the warm up. It was, you know, respectfully quiet. So it was definitely a different kind of atmosphere that we've we've experienced. The figure of the of the Queen was was unbelievable and was amazing. I understand and everyone understood that for you it was a, a big loss. As I said we were focused on us so we, we were ready to, to, to compete. I think we went 1-0 down in that game and came on and managed to win the game in the, in the second half. So, you know, you look back at all these, these games that you've had that have come with different circumstances, you know, being a goal down or, you know, different things happening. I think it's all part of this, this European journey that we've been on for the last two years. I think Maxi got wiped out by the keeper. I remember, I remember that and then there was a long, a long wait for it. Um, so there's a lot of pressure on it and I, I knew that it was to get us back into the game at, at one all, and I knew that if I scored that, we'd go on and win the game. It was just getting that, that first goal to get us back into the, into the tie and, yeah, managed to, to score, score the penalty and then went on and won the game comfortably in the end. Yeah, it was a sad day on a whole, and and, uh, and I think we made a lot of changes uh, in in that game, and, and thankfully we got the win, and, and we progressed again. It was a totally, you know, new experience for a lot of the players to play on an artificial pitch. The Kidmans brought us new boots for everyone, so it was a bit a bit weird. No, not studs, bolts. I'm one that always wears studs in, in games, so you know we had to change to moulds and we went out, experienced the pitch, and it was you know you used to astroturf or whatever, but it was a different, had a different feel about it. It was very quick. And I remember on the night the ball was really fast. I think if I if I can remember the the, the passing stats for both teams were, were really high. Of course, that was you know with the pitch depending. I remember the game, they caused a lot of problems because it's their home, they're used to the, the way they play on it and they zip the ball around a lot, but again, we came away with a victory in, in the end. I think it just goes to show you've got to be different sometimes in, in European ties. I talk about the different cultures, the different philosophies, and I think different pitches come into that as well, you know, and it's about adapting pretty quickly to what's around you. And I think we, we did that and managed it really well to win the game. And 
Anderlecht, if you're talking of a, a big name and football is a, obviously a big, a really big club in, in Belgium. So yeah, it was a, it was another challenge. But again, I think we stepped up, stepped up to the challenge and handled it more than more than well. I remember the away game. I think Gianluca came on and and scored the goal, and it was a, a one nil one nil win then. You know, in France, all, most of the stadiums they're like this. Uh, in Belgium, it's the same. They have the the ultras behind the the goal, so it was good to to feel that pressure. You know, it's a positive pressure and kind of play with them as well. Uh, they, they shout at you and when we scored, for example, yeah, just have a little smile on the, on, the, on the face, showing them that, yeah, tonight it's not for them. I think Lucas Piquetta come on and was, you know, was, was excellent for, for, the, for the time he was on and, and I think he actually set Jan Luca up. And as I say, that was another fantastic night on the road. These footballs, I'm telling you, they're, they're like beach balls the way when they when you play them, especially when you used to play in Premier League week in, week out, which are a bit more heavier, and then you go to these these beach balls, um, you can really let let them fly. And you know that one from the edge of the box I had a couple of touches and then shot and it went in. to make it four out of four in the group stage and pretty much win as the group. And of course we played them the week before which was, you know, we found out what they were about and yeah, certainly at home I remember being pretty comfortable and, you know, we went 2-0 up um, and I think they scored late on if I remember correctly. But look, that was another fantastic night and, and set us well on our way. When you're that close, you want to win all six games, six out of six, um, because I think that, for one, it puts fears into opposition eyes that we get in the next round. They'll be worried about us. And for us, it's about carrying on a momentum and carrying on a, a winning streak, so to speak. And, you know, if you can do that in Europe, you know, you're going to be really unstoppable. So I think for us, we was pretty ruthless that we wanted to win six out of six. Since the, the beginning of the season, we weren't that good in Premier League, so we were trying to use conference to build this momentum. We talk a, a lot about this season, and this kind of games, I think, help us to get our confidence and find ourselves in, in the games. Uh, I had a conversation with the, with the manager, um, and he said he wanted to put me against uh, Serge Borg at home. I remember I played 70 minutes and uh, it was unbelievable because uh, it was my first game, uh, official game with West Ham. After a game when we don't concede the goal, for us, keepers, uh, defenders, we're just happy in, in our minds. It's just like, yeah, done the job. A clean sheet with the win is, yeah, the perfect, uh, perfect game. Not every game was going to be a two or three nil winning. Uh, we found it tough in some of the group stages, and you know, you're playing a lot of games in this competition. Uh, you're not just going to coast every game, and yeah, that was another one. Look, we, we won one nil. The boys were in good spirits at this stage. You know, I think me and a couple of the lads, we kind of had a feeling that, you know, we were going to be involved. I think me and Oli definitely knew a match day minus one. A debut is never an easy thing because it's a lot of nerves. You don't know how you're going to play, how much, uh, how good. Last season, or not too long ago, like, I was I was ball boy, just watching them train and stuff like that. To finally be on the pitch with them. I wouldn't say it was a starstruck woman. I was prepared, but obviously everything was different. You know, playing in front of fans and, and things like that, you don't, you don't get that in youth football. In that moment, 
of the groups there's not uh, VAR, so the first one and the better one probably would be disallowed in another day, but <laughs> I, I, I take it all day long. You know, I had a lot of nerves. Um, to be honest with you, I had nerves like throughout the game. Um, and obviously that that header came on in the second half and you now I've got my head on it. Still saying it's Devine's goal to this day and yeah, I remember celebrating his goal, being so happy for him. To be fair, every time I look at it, it's more of an end goal. <laughs> so I try not to look at it. Um, but nah, that moment was sick. Oli played really well that game and he crossed, the keeper the keeper just punched the ball and and he fell in my in my feet and I just just shot and scored the second one. I'm still young but uh, in this competition I I've played last year this competition and I said it's not uh, an easy competition because uh, every team uh, wants to win this uh, this competition and it's really a chance for also for young players to show the qualities I'm, think, I'm thinking about the divine who scored uh, about Oli uh, who played his first game with West Ham so yeah it was very exciting for everyone and yeah I didn't see like we play with young play, young players I just so we are playing as a West Ham team. We play a really nice game uh, a lot of kids had the chances to make their debuts. You know, every time in football I'm saying like, you have your first chance, you need the opportunity to play and to show your quality. And uh, a lot of players showed uh, that they deserve to play. So yeah, it's good and this is football, that's what I love in, we love in football. Now the group stage is done, how are you reflecting and rating the European campaign so far? Well, I don't think we could, we could rate it any higher than we did do, you know, I think that I think there's been some games we haven't won as easily as I would have liked, and uh, but I thought tonight we won it probably as well tonight as we've won any of the games. I thought we thought we passed it really well tonight and caused them problems. But I have to say, you know, we've been here before. It's great that we have got another run in Europe and we're going to the last 16 in a, a European competition. It's it's fabulous and uh, really looking forward to it. Hoping that we can we can get through the next round and then let's see what happens after that. Hello, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the House of European Football here in Lyon for the UEFA Europa Conference League round of 16 draw. Believe it or not, we have already reached the home stretch of the competition. More than 100 clubs across Europe started the journey at the start of the season. And after eight months, we are down to the final 16. Now, I will ask uh, our yeah. friend uh, and legend Vladimir to start uh, with uh, the winners of the knockout playoffs. First team, first pairing, and uh, first team to play first leg at home. Okay. Aika Larnaca. And that is uh, Aika Larnaca from Cyprus. Uh, very first time uh, in the round of 16 of a UEFA club competition. So, Vladimir, you have uh, eight. Uh, Possible opponents to allocate to Larnaca. Let's see who will win a trip to a beautiful island of Cyprus. West Ham United. And this is West Ham United. So first pairing is between Aik Larnaca, West Ham United. We know how, how close England or the people in here is with Cyprus because most of people here is using Cyprus as a, as a holidays place so all of them were busing and it, wa it was a lot, of, a lot of people over there supporting us so I think it, it was a nice trip to be, to be Western fan. I feel like the, you know, the fans love these away trips, you know. West Ham or Masses, everywhere we go. We haven't been in Europe for for so long. Before last year, the fans, you know, they enjoy it, and you know, as long as we, you know we keep winning games and putting that performance, you know, it's, it's good to give back to them. The atmosphere was weird. It was like a party. 
our fans were just singing all night long. Um, they put different songs on before the game, little party songs that we've obviously got songs to. I think my song came on and I won't sing it, but I think everyone knows the lyrics by now. <laughs> Nicky got two, which was important because, like I said, you go to these, these teams that you don't know much about, the different atmosphere, the different philosophies, and you're away from home. And if you can get a good result away from home, you're one step there. The away trip in Europe is, is, is not, an easy, you know, not an easy match. And we made it quite comfortable in the end. Uh, they had a little spell in the second half to put us on, under the cosh, but. No luck, we dealt with it well, uh, and 2-0 away from home was a fantastic night going into, into the second leg. We know what London Stadium will be unbelievable, because even last year before I signed, I watched uh, European games, and I knew that uh, West Ham fans, they love uh, games in uh, Wednesday or Thursday. When we play at home, when the crowds are with us and we put on a performance to get the crowd with us, I don't, you know, I think we're very hard to stop. what the European competitions are about, is to play against uh, different types of uh, football and yeah, the best one will just win that one. Certainly the, you know, the, the match has become more important, uh, the quarter-final against Ghent and then, and as I say, when we, we played them away, it was, it was another tough, tough match. Team's going to be harder each, each stage and, and they play really, really good in both in both games. Me and Vladi have got a good relationship. We've played together for, for three years now and you know if I say to him if you ever see me in space just give the ball, whether that be on the floor, whether that be from a throw in, from anything. As soon as you see me, just give me the ball basically and you know he he done that and Ingzi is you know, a fox in the box, a poacher, that's what he's, he's done all his career. We got a, an important goal, but I think in that game we were disappointed with the way that we, we played. I think we were lucky in the end not to lose the game away from home. Had good, good strikers, and they've done the job there. They scored against us, but at the end we kept the the draw. You know they had some good players. You know the, the, the style of play they played made it difficult for us at times. But look, one one on the night, we, we wasn't we wasn't great. I remember sitting there watching it, uh, and I come on the last you know five ten minutes, whatever it was, and yeah, we wasn't great in the night. But I think one one wasn't too bad of a result uh, leading into the second leg. Everyone uh, were starting to realise that, yeah, now it's time to, to go through, you know. It's time for, for us, you know. The atmosphere was starting to be a bit louder and louder. And, no, it was, it, it's always a good feeling, you know, when you play and you have this atmosphere uh, pushing you. It's always good and I think it helps everyone to, to, to do the job. One nil down, but 
I was confident that we would win the game comfortably because the way they, they approached the second, the second leg was different to the way they approached the first leg. And I think the way we, we went about it, I think our performance was, was much higher. And you see in the second half, it was 1-1 at half time. And I just knew that we'd go on and win the game. I think it was all it was was getting the, the next goal to go ahead and the game would open up. And you see the, we scored two in like two minutes and the game opened up massively. Becky is very good doing that, that big runs with the ball and most of the times they're, they're having big success or getting corners or goals or shots and yeah, it's, it's also giving to the others a bit of fire to say, wow, the skipper is doing it, so let's go then. We stuck to the task really well. The fans played their part massively. I think the main thing is we kept going and it's come to that thing about wanting to win every game in the group stage. We wanted to go and score five or six against them to put a statement out, I think. And you know, we got we got four goals that night and it was you know, a special night for, for everyone in the end. You look at what you get and then you deal with whatever hand you've been given. Um, we got given the home home tie first. Me personally, I prefer the other way. I, play, I prefer to play the first game away. At home, you know, you will have more chances to score. The stadium will be full. Well, last season, uh, we, play, we played Lyon. Big team at home, first leg, and in Lyon, second leg. And we've done the job. So at the end, you have to win every, against everyone to to get through and to, to win that competition. So you have to, to be ready on, on the pitch at home or away, it's the same. I thought we were good on the night against, against Alfmar at home. We knew what they were about. You know, all Dutch teams are you know, possession-based, have the right style. You know, we find it difficult, they have a lot of possession of the ball. To top that off, they've got some good players to go with it. So certainly at this stage of, of, of the competition, quality in the games you know, are a lot bigger. I always think the first leg games are a bit like a boxing match. You're kind of just waiting and waiting and waiting to see who throws that first knockout punch because you don't know too much about each other. You want to go and put your stamp on, on the game, of course you do, but you know it's a semi-final and there's obviously so much at, at stake. We went 1-0 down, but I thought we was knocking at the door all game. The way we play and the tempo that we play at, no one can manage it for 90 minutes and that's why sometimes it takes a goal in the 60th minute, a goal in the 80th minute, because we wear teams down. We could have scored a couple more on the night as well and really put the, the tie to bed, but you know, we won the game, the fans got right behind us and we, we knew that we could go on and win the game. Obviously we didn't want to concede, but we went on and got a, a good result to take away from home. They play very good, they, they had very good players, a good style of football, so they make us really, really difficult. I, I say to a few of them after the game, like, really impressive how, how you play. And the away leg was, yeah, was, was a perfect performance in terms of defensive shape and, and certainly not letting them have, you know, too many chances. Well, we know we're going to go to win the pressure, especially early on. When you have a one goal lead in a semi-final of a European tie, you're so scared of giving the other team a goal. We had to defend and that was all there was to it. We had to dig deep and 
play ugly. I remember they time wasted after about 20 minutes in their home tie. And I was telling Fonz before, I said, Fonz, if you have any time, you make sure you slow it down. Because one, it'll rifle the crowd. The crowd will get agitated. Their players will get agitated. And then they'll start to lose their heads a bit. In different times, you need to play differently. You need to play ugly because teams do it to us. So you have to be a bit more streetwise and a bit more, more horrible to play against, I'm going to say. Just before I had the contact with my defenders, I was on the floor, a bit tired, and I was like, after that, uh, I saw Pablo going to the goal. I thought he was going to run to the corner and waste time, and then he pulled it through the boy's legs, and I thought, go on, please score. Something inside myself he knew that he went to score the, that goal. And then, and then he scored, and it's, it's that feeling of, of relief. After that, I was like, yeah, I'm not tired anymore. So I just tried to sprint and I joined them uh, after that goal. If you check the video, yeah, I was there at the end. <laughs> it was a, a nice moment for everyone over there. And yeah, it was an unbelievable night for me. This kind of celebration, you know, uh, you always keep them in, the, in your memories. I had the bad luck to be selected for anti-doping, so I couldn't celebrate anything. I just was, I, I just was drinking water. A few people from the UEFA just uh, select you apparently randomly. In that moment, in that day, they asked me for blood test and also for urine test and. Obviously, I can't, I can't say no. So, just had to, wait, to be in a room waiting for, for, for the Wii. That's it. You've done an unbelievable job, not just tonight, but through the whole tournament, get the final. It is a brilliant achievement by you all. So, well done to you! I was dead, so I didn't celebrate a lot. I went to the changing room and they stopped to dance, to laugh. I did like two minutes and then I, I sat down. I, I couldn't, I was uh, drinking uh, water, drinking water. <laughs> and then nothing else, I was dead. <laughs> I want to be involved, I wanted to be just buzzing with all of them and jumping, shouting, go outside with the crowd, but uh, listen, I, <laughs> I won the lottery 10 minutes before, so no, I can't say anything, yeah. Once we got back in the dressing room, the, the lads certainly celebrated and it was, you know, these are the nights that you're in football for and, and certainly for the fans, I should imagine it was, it was special and, you know, to see the group of players who've, you know, worked so hard all season, uh, you know, the Premier League wasn't great, but certainly on the, on the road in Europe and, you know, as you mentioned, these, these places we've travelled, Cyprus, Denmark, uh, Belgium, uh, Holland and, yeah, to get through to the final was, was special. We've got 10 days till we, till we play the game. So I think it was more important that we, we got away from the training ground here for a few days. New environment gave us a chance to have a bit of time together. I'm a big believer in having a great team spirit and 
behind the scenes and we've certainly got that and uh, you know we won't be found wanting for that if it comes along so yeah it was great some of the boys had a bit of time in the water some of the game of golf uh, but overall we had a couple of days where we could change the, the scenery a little bit and just give them a little bit of change. I think for the club it's, it's been far, far too long. I think it's 47 years. It's been a long time. It's a lot, it's a lot for a club um, who keeps growing. It's uh, historic, you know. It's a big occasion and there'll be nerves, but I think the main thing is, is, is excitement. We have to enjoy this moment. You know, on a personal level for me, it's, you know, I'm not gonna get, you know, many opportunities, certainly to play in a final, the European final. Personally, I think this final could, is the biggest game of my career. This competition, European competition, means a lot for, to me because since I'm in Europe, I didn't win trophies. Uh, won big titles, the World Cup, uh, the leagues, FA Cups, lots of them, but still need the European title. Um, this is only beginning of my career, and you know, to be around things like this, I think it's big or something that you know, I'll never forget and take on. And take on to my career as long as it goes. Really happy to, how I said, to be uh, in this moment in this club because the the club is is growing with us in here. The last three years, if someone had said to West Ham, you know, this is the path you're going to take over over these two or three years, I think everyone had you know snapped your hand off. Arriving in the last two seasons into the semi-final and now in a final, I think is is to be really proud. In football, you cannot know when you're gonna play in your next final. So yeah, we will give more than 100%. You know, you want to win it for your mate. You want to win it for the fans. So I think that's why I think it's probably one of the, the biggest games. And you know, that's not in a in a pressure way. That's more in an excited way. I'm excited to play in the final. You know, now that we're, we're in touch and distance, we've got one game left. You know, we could we could really just see what can happen. We had a difficult year, tough year. So I think for the for also for the lads they they deserve to to win this this competition. When you've got a group of players that you're not just teammates with, your your friends and it's like a family. It means more to go out there and, and win the game for, for every single one of us. It's gonna be for the club and we are part of this club right now, so so really really happy for that and to finish the, the job well. Now we have to, to finish the, the work, finish to put that last dot uh, of the of the story and close the book, you know. From the Scandinavian Hammers, we're from Norway. Went to the final 2006, was a bit too young in 80, but uh, been all over to see the West Ham. So the, to, to finally be in the final, and we're going to win, it's, it's uh, massive. We are massive. Representing the Sydney Hammers, a few of the lads flying in from Sydney, they're going via Doha. I think a lot of them are saying just for a week, but they couldn't miss it, they could not be here. Yeah, we're from uh, DC and uh, sports club DC Islands. Flew from JFK in New York to Belgrade in Serbia to Prague. But we're here, we made it. We travelled over from Derry in Northern Ireland. It's been really good. I mean, uh, we, were out, we were out last night. <laughs> to be here with my son, uh, representing uh, Derry, 
and the Belfast Hammers is, is great. It'll mean everything to bring the cup back to East London. And I can't wait to see it back on the plane. I'm here with the New York Hammers. I've known the New York Hammers for about 15 years. I live and breathe West Ham. Cut me open, I'm Claret and Blue. I can't put it into words. I've got goosebumps to talk about. Just to be here is one thing, but if we could pull this off and win this, it would be like phenomenal. <laughs> Okay guys, are you ready? Welcome here in Prague for this uh, press conference for the UEFA Europa Conference League final between West Ham United and uh, Fiorentina. On stage today we have Thomas Tuchet and uh, Jared Bowen from uh, West Ham United. And uh, let's start. Simon Stone, BBC. Um, you're back home. What would it mean to win a European trophy for West Ham in your home country? Uh, for me it was like, uh, come on guys, we have to go there, so it's like a big goal uh, for this year. Obviously we've seen a lot of Fiorentina, we've done our preparation on them and you know it's it's a final, you don't get to a final for being a, a bad team. Question for, for both of you, um, you'll be well aware of how many thousands of fans have, have travelled out here to support the club. How important is it for you guys to win it, to try and win it, not just for yourselves, not just for the club, uh, but, but for the West Ham fans? I've been here three years and if you told me that we'd be in the European final three years later, I would have bit your hand off. You know, last year we was obviously so disappointed to lose in the semi-final, so that probably gave us that extra extra bit of motivation to do it to do it this year. And I think with the season that we've had as well, I think adds into wanting to make it even more special for us. Um, but like I said, the fans are travelling out here in I don't know how many numbers, but the the fan base here is is incredible and. We want to win it, like you said, for, for us, for our teammates, but mainly the fans. in a European final. For any manager, I think it's a thrill. Whether you're an experienced one or whether you're a very young one, I think it's one of the pinnacles you can get in football. Of every faith in, in the team that they'll go about their jobs in the right way, professionally. We had learned a few lessons from last year when we were in Frankfurt in the semi-final, so I'm hoping that we take it into the game, but obviously we want to be really committed and we're going to fight for everything we possibly can. I've had over a thousand games in, in football and I've been fortunate enough to, to be in some finals, fortunate enough to be in some promotions. But this is the biggest moment.
Starks to bring it down. Russell and Arnie is there. Well, big appeals here from the West Ham players. always this to be a long night. Pacatar, he's played it through, and Bowen's in, it's up for grabs now! Yeah! He's done it! David Moyes is on the pitch! West Ham have won it! European glory is theirs! Surely Moyes' mission is accomplished! The wait for Major Silverware leading up to it this is the biggest game of my career I've played for England and, and that but this to, to give them a European trophy that we knew we were so close and then I knew if I, I made that run about 10 times a game and I might only get it once and it's about when you when you get that ball and you get it you've got to, you've got to pull it away and I had a lot of time so I was a bit nervous running through but and then to see it go in I was like nah this is like you, you always say I want to score the winner in the last minute but to, to do it, to do it, to do it for this this club, these fans, are the best moment of my life. We have done it. We have done it. Uh, we are making a West Ham history with these beautiful fans. Uh, everybody in the club definitely deserve it, and uh, that's happened in the Prague, so that's uh, even more emotional for me. to do what you got to do to win and everybody was ready all the guys on the bench we knew everybody that's getting on the game need to lead the team and push forward to get the win and we did it today today's the the pinnacle of years and years of hard work years and years of getting to this position a lot of failure a lot of heartache a lot of tears but that's why that's why we love the club. That's why West Ham is West Ham because you never know what's around the corner. We've had ups, we've had downs, but this is what you do it for. These nights, these fans. Like, look how special it is, man. I'm telling you now, what a special group of people they all are. Incredible and just so happy. Like, this club means so much to me. This will be as big as it gets, but I, I'm saying this to be a European winner for West Ham. And I say, if somebody had said that we'd have been in Europe, we avoided relegation, semi final of Europe, final and winning it, you'd have said, you're dreaming.
I'm so happy. I'm so happy. My family is here. I score in the final. I'm so happy. This is uh, it's crazy. I'm champion. Ah, I can't believe that. I can't put into words. The emotions are running high. You know, this what this club's wants. It's been far too long, and you know, to to win two one tonight. And yeah, it's just I'm speechless. Uh, so over the moon. So happy. And look, this is what we want. This is what we're all happy for. And yeah, can't believe it. Gianluca Scamacca, ma che bellissimo! Hello, mate. Uh, Jared, 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 Jared,
Come on, Dings, get it right here. Come on. Yeah, baby. Amazon. Oh, oh. Amazon. Danny. <laughs> Danny. <laughs> 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 Come on, come on, come on, come on! Beautiful, it's beautiful. Like I said, like I said, for the club, it's uh, amazing. This is ridiculous, ridiculous. What, what can I say? Uh, we, are, we are totally excited, everyone is excited. And I think it's, uh, it's something like we really deserve from the coaching staff, for everyone at the back. I think it's, uh, it's amazing for everyone. Look, it's incredible, lad. You know, when when you when we won it yesterday, got all emotional and feel, we, with me boy, and then just seeing this, it's just unbelievable. I can't, I, you can never ever. I can't, you can't put it into words. Just thank them for coming. We thank them for the support. And absolutely delighted to be here. Yeah. You don't realise how well supported it is here. <laughs> When you're a kid, you just dream of winning trophies, having trophy parades. But to do it with a club like West Ham, like, I can't even explain it, just how special it is. Like, all these, all these, you know, top six clubs win trophies and obviously have, you know, lots of success. But when you do it with a club like West Ham, who's not had, you know, not seen a European trophy in 47 years, becomes a little bit more special. Um, and you, look, you can see that today, what a feeling, I love it. I love these fans, I love this club, it's incredible. I, I don't know what to say. Kev, what do you think? <laughs> Just share like it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. It's what they all deserve. Love it. Everywhere we go.
our fans and they are amazing. They've been amazing many years and we are just happy that we could get give them the memory for whole life and uh, we can be part of it. For my career it's like nice years and now it's nearly four years and I just hope that uh, yeah, I, ne I never forget uh, this, uh, this, resume, uh, this resume and uh, I will remember for whole life. This guy, it's my brother, you know. And now he start to speak English. No, no, next season, next season, I promise. No, the next season I can speak. He, he can speak English. I know him. I'm very happy. I'm very happy. Yeah, I got it. Thank you Thank for you so your support. No, fala, Magico. Thank you so much. For Thank you season. so much for the season. I see you in the next season. Ah, got it. Now he's got the ball. Lucas is like that. <laughs> hey, Lucas is like that. Is it? <laughs> oh, bloke, man. I lost it. Everywhere we go. I lost it. Everywhere we go. Just enjoying the moment, you know. Uh, it's incredible. Uh, we've done something huge for the team, for the the club, the history of the club. So, just proud of that. We're part of the story of the club now. So, no one can say uh, that we we didn't do the job and we didn't bring that trophy at home. So, yeah. Now the trophy is with us, and we're enjoying that. Just incredible the amount of people around the streets. And uh, ahead of us again, it's still smoke bombs and uh, just great seeing so many people on the streets. And I think understanding the, the, how well the players have done this season, they've done a brilliant job and rightly so, they should be cheered. They've won a European competition and I think that uh, that deserves the, the supporters of West Ham to come out and celebrate. And uh, I hope they do because the players are. We, we've, We've really worked hard to try and get in this position uh, and uh, we're thrilled that we've got a trophy. Happy, we are happy. I guarantee we didn't sleep yesterday because we were very happy. So yeah, we enjoyed tonight. Obviously, we said like this Conference League can save our season. We know we had a tough season in Premier League, but the most important, we are in Premier League, and next year we play Europe and we have this trophy. <laughs>
well for this club. Everyone was saying that this is a different club. Yeah, it's a very special club. Now, I've been here for now what, for five years. And it's always been like so up and down, really, so many emotions. But I mean, this today just beats everything. Uh, obviously, we've been through, like you said, some really difficult times. We haven't won any trophy for over 40 years. We have now. Yeah, we have now. So I mean, we are like, we just created a history. for the club.
a man of big words, big speeches. So I just want to say a few little things.